you even listening? The Gritscast. The TF2 podcast. With these jokes. Hello everybody, welcome to Gritscast, the Team Fortress 2 podcast. My name is Agro, I have a beer with me this evening. It's a local beer from London. It's a session IPA from the brewery known as Four Pure. Anyway, there are two other people with me this evening, one of whom is pure and the other one is falling over a small teaspoon. Anyway, the one <laughs> whom is from Canada <laughs> is this one. Hello, my name is Uber Chain and I'm from Canada, eh? Currently <laughs> I am a drinking thing. a water because water is good and I just a? woke up literally as the show called me and said you need to get on the show right now. That's how professional we are. And we have a special guest with us this evening. A gentleman flying in all the way from over there. Uh, he is now <laughs> synonymous with doing things a little bit differently, but not very differently, just a little bit differently in a way that some of us might find amusing. For he is a comedian of sorts, a fellow person known as this guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want, can you introduce me everywhere like that? Can oh, I Jesus just, like, Christ. I want Holy you- smokes. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of yours, by the way. Like, always, like, check out your show on Sunday, Jesus. So good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I try to do my best, you know, but I'm always upstaged by the other two. Uh, no, but all the way from over there, over there in the, you know, the US of A. I, I don't I'm, even know I'm, what over there is. Yeah, I'm Sigafu. I'm from America and I do things apparently differently, but America apparently has shown themselves to do stuff, uh, differently with this, everything that's been going on. So I, I guess maybe I'm, I'm more normal now. Okay. Well, that's, that's three mostly normal people, kinda, uh, and, and all of you, you people who are not necessarily normal, we're not judging you, you do your thing, we'll do ours, and somewhere in the middle we'll meet and exchange togas, as is the normal way for people to meet and exchange things. Anyway, uh, the show today, there is updates, you not a long list of updates, as there has been on previous shows, but what's there is gold for a certain subsection of the community. There is a DreamHack Winter event happening in the very shortness of time. Sigafu is here to talk about all things Sigafu Challenge Cup. That happened. Uh, and there were Saxies. Saxies dropped this week, and there were comp competitors and some people did better than others and one person won and by one person i mean a whole team of people so this is really poorly introduced oh yes and face it uh yes you must face it face it is running a team fortress 2 open cup challenge and it will go live mere moments after we finish this show depending on how fast i can get through the introduction of things we're going to be talking about this week but best that we move on to the very beginning. The beginning was where the updates happened. There were two. One was mostly based around the concept of localization files and their being updated. The other one was more interesting. I know I'm thinking the same thing. What could possibly be more interesting than updating localization files? But things happened. Yes, let me tell you, those unusual drop chances are very interesting. Like compared okay, to everything that, not, else, not that thing. All right, okay. So the the chances of getting like unusuals that has dramatically dropped back to how it was before. So if you've been holding onto a whole bunch of crates in the hope of opening all of your unusuals at the same time, by the way, I opened like twenty twenty boxes. Did you open any boxes? Did you open crates? I didn't. Did you? No, Uber? because uh, what happened is that when I like first started playing TF2 and the Christmas update app happened, I spent like. Not like a All the like money. insane amount of money, but I spent enough money to realize what I was doing, and I just vowed to stop from that day because <laughs> I was not getting anything useful. Now I heard that the drop chances like increased, and everybody's talking about yeah. like how like they're getting unusuals. Like I would be in the middle of my like sexy meeting. Sleeping bear would be like, oh, I've just opened another box and found like I've opened four boxes and found like three unusuals. You're like how? How did you do that? 
it, it's insane, yeah. And people would be like, oh yeah, it's like, guys, I, I found an unusual. And I'm like, why is everybody finding unusuals? Exactly. So now, now I don't know. I mean, the, the TF2 economy has got to be a little bit screwed up as a result of this. There's now a, like a, a flooding of unusual hats on the market. Uh, I don't know whether that's affected like the prices of the really, really expensive hats. If the chance of getting a really expensive one, do you know what I've got? I've got like the last time I looked before all this dropped, I had a, um, I had an unusual that uh, of which there were only two in existence. I'm going to go back and check after the show, but I'll be slightly disappointed to discover like there's another seven of them now, or seventeen or seventy. Mm-hmm. Um, but that said, anyone who makes any money as a result of keys going into holes then they would have raked in a small fortune over the Halloween update. So that's not all bad news for the community. Um, just hope that you weren't basing any of your money for futures on, on hat sales. Well, it's, it's interesting. I wonder really, like, what the decision-making process was at, like, at Valve. Like, if they knew, like, they kind of anticipated what kind of effect this would have on the economy. I mean, I'm sure they're thinking about this, or hopefully they're thinking about it, but... Or if they just wanted to get more key money, which would also just make sense. <laughs> yes. uh, Baba needs new shoes. Um, <laughs> right. So that was the thing. But that wasn't actually the thing that I was super, super into with the updates. Um, so there's a, a couple of communities um, that are, are really focused on trying to better the relationship with Valve and community servers. Um, and the relationship with the community and community servers, community run servers. Um, I, I want to shout out to, um, Rowdy. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, but also to the guys over at, uh, GameShock, um, who look after the TF, uh, the, the TF crew guys at our own servers. Anyway, look, the short and tall is that something happened. Um, Valve have implemented a new, version of audio codec and they've made it exclusively available for community servers which is something that i don't think that they have done in the past it seems to be a new way of working they used to have uh, a whole bunch of uh, test servers where you had to install a new version of, or a second version of the game just to run on these test servers and it looks like what they might be doing now is is trying out um or, or, or utilizing the community as test base environment, mm. which I hope that they continue with because it's it, it's something that that sets up the community as being um, like a reason to go back to the community servers beyond the experience, beyond the possibility of hanging out with like famous people or whatever it is, or or having special hats or whatever. And it, it's a chance to 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 make a difference to Team Fortress Two. Um, and it, it seems to be working. I mean, there, there's, there's certainly been more life in, in the old, uh, dog the, than there has been for a little while. And this, this, uh, CELT, which I assume, uh, Celt, Celt, um, the, the voice codec is the same as they're using in Counter Strike. Yes, yes, yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's a t- that's actually a really interesting point that you make there. It's one I didn't even think about when I when I saw that it was only for community servers because like Valve, they own all of their own right uh, the quick play and matchmaking servers. So I was like, it's, I found it really odd that they would only do it for community servers. And I was like, okay, it must be like it's unstable or they're worried about it breaking. So if it breaks, they're not going to break like everything for everybody. But the point you're making about, I mean, on top of that is it does create an incentive for people to go back to a community server to go, okay, well, I want to go see what this looks like. The only way I can do this is by going out to a server, uh, a community server to do that. And I could see that as being like a, just a really subtle yeah. way for them to try to increase the people going back uh, in that direction. But it gives them like um, this maybe the end of it maybe like the first and only time they do it i one of the things that valve have been very good at doing they've always been this kind of a company is is a data-based company mm-hmm. as in rather than relying on people giving them verbal feedback which is generally an echo chamber which is generally an environment where people say the people who speak the loudest have the most impact um what they've tended to do in the past is just read the numbers that come back through their through their systems through their servers. However, in something like voice and audio, 
What you actually want to have is the people who speak the loudest, speaking the loudest to you, telling you whether or not it's working. So in this kind of a scenario, uh, actually putting it on the community servers is the best thing to do. It is, it's going to give you the best kind of feedback. The question is, will they use... Will they use the community service for testing again in the future for things that aren't so voice uh, orientated? I would that, think so. It's yeah. Yeah, fascinating would... to me when you mention it because I had thought that this completely like updated, but I guess it's like it's still being tested. But they chose to do it on community servers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason why I think they added this a while back is that uh. One of the face it admins actually messaged the or emailed the TF team and asked about it, and I guess they were reminded about the other people who probably emailed and asked about it. So yeah. they figured why not? Because um face it. Yeah, might what have they got to lose? Like it's it's a good thing overall. Like this voice codec has needed to been to have been updated yeah. for quite well, some up, time. Up, up till now they've been using speaks. No, but speaks uh, uses the same like doesn't like yep. mumble use like Mumble uses or LT, Mumble like, uses or used to use speaks. I'm pretty sure TeamSpeak yeah. used speaks for a while, but then TeamSpeak differentiated themselves by using a better version or a better no, audio I'm codec. Certain, like uses C E L T, but then they use like yeah. I think speaks is built well, yeah, on it. This is it. So like everything everything has moved on. Like the whole industry has moved on and it seems mad to to be stuck uh in uh, this is like my whole argument for, for, uh, uh, moving source onto the next version for, for Team Fortress 2. Like, everything seems to be stuck in what it was in, like, cutting edge eight years ago. Uh, and so moving this on is, is another, is another great push for, for the, for the Team Fortress team. But it also kind of opens up the door for the possibility that maybe they will be looking at this as a necessary requirement in order to preempt a more serious look at competitive like you're not gonna you're not gonna release a csgo game if if you can't expect like people talking within the uh within the same team within mm-hmm. like um not as in people who are joining a or one by one or, or solo queuing whatever it's called but it, it just it, people, it won't yeah. happen in game though is the thing usually like if they're using an in like most games period will use a a third party client. I think it's good that like the voice codec is finally being like updated in case you're like doing like lobbies. Yep. I will. I don't. I mean, CS:GO uses in-game. I, a lot of the games I play Actually, that have. Yeah. Now that you mention it, because they use in-game for casting. I think they also sync up like their casters to the actual like in-game audio. Now that you mention it, so I think this. Cool. Now that you mention it, I take back like what I said because this might mean a lot of good things. <laughs> Yeah, I should no, delete I'm... all of the previous conversations. <laughs> well, no, it's like, it's, it's kind of like it. this, right? They, they're, they're casters yeah. themselves. Like I would see like in CSGO cast, there's like a little speaker indicating who's talking and I would see the casters synced up to the game. So I suddenly realized that basically those are for the people who are watching maybe from spec who aren't watching a stream. Right. So suddenly that mean, makes like, a just... lot of sense. But to your point about matchmaking, I think it is a good step forward and a step forward that they're saying like, okay, we want to like, cause you, you can't do, you, matchmaking voice chat was terrible. I mean, cause it was the old system where there was like a, like a half second to, you know, or longer delay on or something that felt terrible. And to have this, it sounds clear in my understanding. It also is, is quicker. And so it's just a little bit easier to use. And so I, I think it just shows them that they're trying to make progress towards matchmaking, which I know is a priority for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, look, I mean, it's not like it was the only thing that was updated. There were a few other things, but, but frankly, that's, that's kind of like, that's, that's the, the meat and potatoes of the updates. What's more important, uh, than talking about updates, if you can possibly imagine that, is the future. Um, not the past. The past we'll get, we'll get to, like a time team episode. We'll get to the past. We'll get to, we'll get to things that have happened. Let's take a moment to recognize things that will happen. And one of those things is the DreamHack Winter 2016 event, which will happen in about a week's time, depending on when you're listening to this. Yeah, isn't it going to be over Thanksgiving weekend for us Americans, I believe, which will be in... I have no idea. When is Thanksgiving weekend? Talking to the Brit. 
Thanksgiving, I, I, I should know this. And I'm a like Canadian. an American. <laughs> but Thanksgiving, I believe, is next week. It should be next Thursday, um, if I have my dates correctly. And I think this is happening. Um, I'm trying to find the date. I'm, I'm at the Team Fortress t- TV page here, but I believe it is next week it, it, when it's going down. So, um, unusually, yeah. I, mean, I, I know that the, the, the community has covered or done, uh, I know that actually Uberchain, you've been involved with last year with the DreamHack Winter event. So it's, it's the biggest, I think it's the biggest or is it like one of the biggest? It's, it, it's it huge anyway. Like a big sort of land next to the iSeries. Wait. No, no, I mean, I mean, it, it's like the whole DreamHack thing itself is, is DreamHack freaking DreamHack is a massive. huge event. It's basically the root of competitive FPS games, sort of starting off with CSGO. And so, it was CSGO's, uh, like, biggest sort of, like, tourney at yeah, the I mean, time of its conception. So basically it's a huge sort of historical landmark in terms of competitive, like, gaming as well as a bunch of... I, like, we, we're not sorts. talking, like there's 5000 people that turn up that that's 5000 people um there's probably a, a day there's there's 20000 we're talking massive massive it's a numbers big convention, of gamers basically like it's a big convention and like tournament hosting like there's all sorts of tournaments that get hosted here there's um there's a CS:GO yep. tournaments there's there's sometimes smash tournaments there's i know Lol heroes of the storm had a Dota. wickedly yeah. sweet stage in dreamhack summer that i passed by it's just so, there's a lot so going on the, all of the big games, all of the big FPS games, all of the big esports games get some DreamHack time. It's, it's not even like FPS Dreamhack games is... too. It's like Heroes of the Storm is not an FPS, no. but it had a really high budget stage and like insane quality oh, tournament. <laughs> that makes sense because Blizzard tries to put a lot of money into that stuff. Yes, it seem. They, they they really do. They take care of their like they they take care of like all their games like a helicopter parent. Right. They really okay, do. I don't understand pop, that there concept. Was a but this is not a Blizzard podcast, so <laughs> I'm just going to pass over podcast that. Podcast seventy six. Podcast seventy six dot com. Um, yeah. So uh, last year there was a, a small showing. I think you guys brought uh, a few teams, three or four teams, maybe. Um, and four you guys, teams, yes. Yeah, uh, you you kind of hacked it out as to to who was going to be the the ultimate winter winner, and uh, I think you guys kind of overstayed your welcome a little bit. I, I don't want to step over the mark. That, that was summer. We was overstayed that, our welcome in summer. Okay. So this year, to save us from tears, DreamHack have given it to someone special. Special. And the very next oh, keep talking, keep talking. I don't want to hear this. I'm like, I'm wait- I didn't want to talk over it because it just, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it was so sad. My goodness. Okay, so <laughs> this time round, Essentials.tf are, are manning the pumps. They are, they are laying down the gauntlet. They are, they are the the team, the 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 streaming environment, whatever, whatever Essentials. Do you know what? I, I still don't know to this day, like what the hell Essentials.tf is supposed it's to be. It's everything. It's like everything. It's literally everything. It's all of the team. Fortress 2. Uh, so they are, they're putting on a show. Um, there's going to be four teams. I know three have been announced. There's going to be an announcement coming out either today or tomorrow about who the fourth one is going to be. And they're, they're, they're doing new stuff as well. I and mean, this is, this is, I had a conversation with Vitoft, uh, yesterday and he was saying, don't forget to mention Dreamhack Winter, by the way. <laughs> um, they've got a whole bunch of new toys to play with. Yeah. I can uh, actually speak yep. to that because i'm i got my hand in the well i guess i guess uber you do as well but i have my hand in the production community having kind of doing my own production crew inside north america and so i got to see a lot of this stuff and, and i talked about it when i went to valve and i think things that can be improved when it comes to camera work because i think camera work as it stands prior to this year was not bad but i think it can improve to make it tf2 a more watchable so this, experience. Is, this is camera work inside the game itself as opposed to um in uh uh, X times face. Yeah, and, and I think the biggest thing for me is I think that TF2 needs to have more third person camera. Um, not exclusive third person, but more third person camera than zero. And I think that would really help uh, display team pushes and, and, and really communicate what is happening in the game. Because if you only see the scout who's the furthest person forward getting the frags, you don't see the other five players behind them and what they're doing and how the push comes in. And, I, you know, as a caster, I'm watching everything in third person. So I get to see the beauty yeah. of the game. And I always kind of feel bad that the person watching the game doesn't really get to see the team oriented nature. They only see the frag oriented nature, which I 
don't think effectively communicates. So, so this is, this is a really cool experience. This is going to be, um, uh, whether or not it's, it's taken forward, it's, it's a stepping stone. Uh, yeah, sorry, course. a stepping stone, uh, to, to, to how we're going to be viewing Team Fortress 2 competitive in the future. I think it's, it's going to be the first go at it. I mean, I, I, as seen it and I, I think I understand why the F, the first person, you know, thing. And I think the thing was, is people experimented with the third person camera, but if you don't have tools to aid it, to make it if look cleaner, if you don't cleaner, have tools, it's going to like, it's going to look like terrible. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like trash, but I think to compare TF2 to any other FPS is a mistake because it is so different than like, you know, CSGO, you don't see players like flooding into the point the same way that you would see a soldier and two scouts, you know, running in there at the same time. I think at this point we have to like see how it like adjusts yeah. and we'll yeah, see I mean, if like other, other systems to. like face it or like even if you want to have another cup anymore, we'll use like the observation system we'll see yeah i mean face it i'm glad you brought that up face it is uh is a competitive environment uh they they've been into the whole sort of dota and shooters and csgo thing for a long time it, it it's i'm i'm kind of in the black a little or at least in the gray as to what face it is and, and how important they are but i get the impression that they're kind of big they're very big I with the counter strike yeah. go community yeah okay so, uh, for the last few months, there's been a closed beta with Face It where they, I mean, their Discord channel is always busy. Uh, they've had, they've opened up their facilities to the Team Fortress 2 competitive community and allowed people to play around with it and do like one day cups and just Did go they, mad with the system. Didn't Face It actually kind of struggle to get people to consistently show up inside their system? Like that was kind of one of the issues. Yeah. Was I that- mean, they, they, they have had, as anyone would have, if if they're trying to uh, introduce competitive uh, facilities to a mm-hmm. market that's currently flooded. I mean, if you look at the the other opportunities that are available for for um, uh, for TF2 sort of semi pro players to get their rocks on it in competitive, the the the, the choice is unlimited. Um, so, face it, have, have tried to. Uh, establish themselves within the competitive Team Fortress 2 community and one of the ways they've gone about it I mean certainly the latest way of going about it is to to open themselves up to a more sort of uh, open beta rather than closed beta as before um, and put a, a, a challenge down put a, an open challenge cup uh, <laughs> with a, a prize fund of, of $2,500 very much like someone else did I mean recently. I'm not saying they copied anybody here but it <laughs> Kind of but seems like it. Exactly <laughs> the same amount of money, yeah. Uh, I actually, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So the, the, the challenge has gone out there. Um, in a couple of hours after we get done, face it, are going to be kicking off and doing their own thing today. That's, uh, uh, Saturday the 19th. Um, I imagine if you're listening to this later on, there's going to be VODs that you can check out. Uh, we will certainly endeavor to link to them, uh, on our page. Um, but yeah, there's, that, it's cool that they're doing it. I'm glad that they've made it open. And like the number of teams that have signed up for this is super ridiculous. Like it's, it's a huge number. Um, yeah, I think they're up to like 30 or 40. No, I was asked, yeah. They had a goal of 64. On, like, I think I was asked to like med for one of the teams. And I think I said I was like busy at the time because I genuinely was yeah. busy. So as it would turn out, I am busy. I'm on the show. But <laughs> well, I don't know. You can still play. You can like, still play. It's at not the time too late. we're recording this, it starts in like two hours. So, like at that point, we, like we'll we'll rush through and give you a chance yeah, I, well, to to no, win some like, gold. The thing is, like, I need to like work on some commissions, and like Sigafu probably needs to cast it. So it's like the moment yeah. this ends, <laughs> yeah, we're literally going to just be like, okay, cool, great show, nice working with you. <laughs> Bye. Just yeah, so I, I don't know, but I'm going to start watching it. So that's that's a, a different matter. But look, they they have managed to raise enough awareness in, in what is effectively a very short period of time. I mean, there's there's effectively no warning for this. It was just like uh, about a week ago they said, they "Hey guys, we're going to do this. System Who wants to sign like up?" All their organization, yeah, don't a they? lot of the organization. Like, which I don't is, know how it's I feel really about great. Discord. They've, like on well, organization. I mean, it's it's. Discord or Slack, in terms of if you're going to try and do any kind of organization, Discord seems to be winning the war at the moment, certainly for gamers. Um, but they've got their own website as well. They have their own facilities. They know what they're doing. They know how to organize uh, matches. And we hope... I, I don't want to cast aspersions on them yet until they've had a chance to prove themselves once within the Team Fortress 2 community uh, when there's money on the line. And 
in having like an open environment like this, perhaps, I mean, I know Froyo, for example, Froyo will enter anything. Um, just keep your, uh, keep your daughters locked up. Uh, but, but Froyo, uh, Froyo Tech being like this excellent sports team, like if you had the opportunity to play against them, um, and turned it down, well, you're a fool. Uh, so I think anyone and everyone will want to be going up with a chance to play against some really competitive teams. Eh, uh, experience is experience and you can't buy that. Um, so we kind of wish them well. Uh, Sigifu, I know that you're going to be casting for this one. Yep. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Uh, as you said, it was a little bit last minute, but it should be good games. Um, and it's going to be promoting the system, which I think is ultimately what their goal is. So they got their name out there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we kind of, I kind of want it to be awesome. Like I, I sort of want it to be not as good as Essentials.tf, which is trying new and exciting things. Plus, I love the guys over there, Essentials.tf, and I say their website like all the time whenever I'm trying to talk about it. Um, yeah, Essentials.tf. So, uh, definitely check that out. But yeah, <laughs> so I want it to be not as good as uh, Dreamhack Winter with Essentials.tf, but I still want it to be really awesome. Um, but I, I'm forever and a day. I'm always, always, always having experienced it like as a as um, a member of the, I must admit, somewhat dubious audience, um, I, I'm i going to compare everything. Like you compare everything to your first girlfriend or boyfriend, doesn't matter. I'm going to compare everything to the Sigafu Challenge Cup, <laughs> which for me was basically everything, everything I've ever wanted from Team Fortress 2 competitive in one Challenge Cup. I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's exactly w- what I was hoping for when I put that on was <laughs> just for me to be happy. Just from you, just from you. I mean, yeah. well, it was, it was really, no, it was I, great. I mean, I saw your, I think you tweeted at me, um, after the first day, something along the line. I forget exactly what it was, but basically it was like, this is, this is like what I wanted. And I'm like, thank you. Like you are like exactly the kind of, I think, target demographic that I was kind of going for. Well, that initially when I started the cup, you weren't. Like what I was going for was the Sixes community. Um, but I kind of pivoted um, early on um, and about a month prior to the cup just because I realized that it, it, my intended goal originally, and I don't know if you, I mean, do we don't want to just kind of get into the challenge cup? I can kind of talk about it all now. But, yeah, I mean, uh, this is kind of why you want anyway to talk about a challenge cup. Just give us a brief overview of, of where it was that you wanted to do with it originally and when you transitioned to sevens and then, and how it built up. Yeah. From, from the horse's mouse. Horse's so, mouse? The horse's mouth. <laughs> so originally, um, I did it. So I created the tournament and the idea that I had in my head is something that I've had in my head for a long time, which is that I've always wanted to play an experiment inside of TF2 with formats and d- do different things. Because if we look at it, Sixes has been around for about five to six years. Highlander has been around for at least that much time. Um, and there hasn't been really any n- new formats that ha- have done well. Um, I mean, we've had 4v4, but that's not really TF2 and we've had Arena Respawn, but that never really caught on or I don't, I don't know. I think, I don't think it particularly played well. And, and the thing that really stood out to me was like, I wanted Payload to work. I think Payload is a great game mode. I, I'm assuming it's like one of the most popular game modes. And I was like, and we saw Valve trying to experiment with pay mo- Payload inside of matchmaking. And so then the question then became to myself of like, how can we get Payload? load to work instead of a competitive setting um out in, in, in how to get that to work and so what happened was i originally created the cup because i wanted to try to show the sixes community and, and maybe move them along in a, in a new direction or at least to make a, a challenge them like that, that open their eyes the possibility of something new and different exactly is to be like okay hey you know we just you know because the thing is is like people always um, if you go to like the, the way people talked about the cup prior to, they said, oh, well, this has been tried five years ago. So therefore 7v7 can't work. Or, you know, this, we, we tried pl- pro lander, like, for, like, when's the last time anything's get, been really given a serious chance? Like, when's the last time that any of these format ideas that I, I kind of came together with were given a serious chance? And I don't know if they ever were. And so, um, uh, so that's kind of it. And then what happened was when I originally released it, it was going to be a 6v6 with one scout. Uh, limit and then everything else was going to be sixes class limits and and the, there was actually yeah. a, a decent pushback from the community and I, I realized that like I kind of I originally wanted to do sevens but I changed it and I was really concerned because I don't think sixes would play pay- well on payload for various reasons I can get into and so I was like okay listen if I'm going to put on a cup if I'm going to spend 
$2,500 of my own money. I don't want something that's not going to play well. And I know, and I'm like very confident sevens yeah. will play well. And so, and the other thing is if the community is going to chastise me, I'd rather stand behind something I truly believe in and, and think is correct and will do well rather than try to meet them halfway and then have them hate me and it go bad. And so, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I switched it over to sevens. Then. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so yeah, so I switched it over to sevens and, um, got a lot a lot of hate for that um an immense amount but i stayed to it and um it ultimately ended up going well so the rule set um that ended up going over the cup so it's 7v7 uh the maps were primarily payload and cough the uh, it was one limit a, a class limit of one per class and then there was no set white list but there was a pick ban system prior to each map so you would do it multiple times throughout the match and as you kind of learn the teams and the different game modes per, uh, prompt different bannings and you kind of go from there and so i think it ended up uh being really awesome exciting and honestly like some of the best tf2 i've seen and i've watched a lot of highlander i've watched not as much 6v6 but i i really loved um what came out of it and i was actually it was better than what i was expecting so like one of the things that really worked for me i mean uh, um the highlander experience is something that i i love i mean I, not because um i enjoy there being only one of each class but because it's um it's it's inclusive it's more relatable mm-hmm. as someone who's kind of into competitive but not really all that but is really really into um uh, there being every class represented uh and sixes for me is always sixes for me isn't team fortress 2 it's it's a game that involves classes from team fortress 2 mm-hmm. but certainly not all the classes and um, even when there's a pyro or a heavy or a sniper or an engineer involved, they never leave the first spawn environments. Like the expectation is that you, you defend hard or push hard. Um, but, but, but when, uh, you're moving from mid, it's, it's going to be a set number of classes moving from mid and nothing else. And, and that isn't, it's not my Team Fortress 2. I, I get it. It's some people's Team Fortress 2. And some people have come to Team Fortress 2 only from the Sixes environment. Like they've never seen anything else. You show them Highlander, oh, sorry, you show them Highlander or you show them Payload or you show them, um, any kind of like spooky stuff. And they're like, this, what the hell? This is oh, MVM. That's a, that's a thing that exists. <laughs> um, so for them, um, this, it, it's not, it's not super relatable for them. Um, but what you did, what you did is you proved that the other classes that existed had a place within competitive Team Fortress 2. And you proved it in a way that said, hey, look, um, some of the classes, like the, the, the classes for me that seem super overpowered, uh, that are now so, so ingrained into Six's environment, into Six's competitive, uh, those classes are demo man gotta have a demo man demo man does so much damage and people have kind of grown to not love but respect the fact that demo man does that much damage and that's okay like it's okay for a demo man to single-handedly cream everyone else because that's what a demo man does and like if any other class creams anyone else oh uh, well uh, uh. But but in opening up to sevens, you had like snipers dominating the class. You had you had spies. Because I hate spies. I loathe. I'm a career pyro. I loathe spies. But seeing them played competitively, seeing them dominate the field, just be so effective, obliterate everyone's expectations, forcing seasoned players to to second guess everyone they saw because there was an extra guy on the team and there's an extra player and they didn't know who this how the their medic has been dropped so many times it, it was just excitement after excitement it was it was new challenges and the pick band system i'm, I'm waxing lyrical the pick band system my goodness me that that stands alone as being a most awesome experience it introduced into team fortress 2 the wonder of a storyline that doesn't exist in the fast-paced nature of sixes or even Highlander, where there's lots of little stories going on all the time and the struggles keep up with them. A pick-ban system allowed the game to slow right down 
And it allowed the audience to communicate and have this conversation amongst themselves, not shit posting, not, not soap posting, what, uh, not memeing, but actually discussing like, oh, he, he chose to ban that weapon or that team. They, they've allowed that one. They must be really going for like the pyro team or they must be really wanting to, to get the heavy in there and how this has changed the entire format as people have gone along. That was a gritting story that I'm, ugh. I'm sorry. Uh, I, no, I'm glad that we're not in the same room. I'd be humping your leg right now. That, I, that, that, I, I gotta, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like. I, I gotta say, like, if my ego wasn't big enough already, it's been inflating pretty big in this last couple of minutes. <laughs> but no, but, look, but no. Uh, you, you, okay. I think you ex- exactly describe 100 percent like what I was going for was that um, I wanted to see more inclusion from all the classes. I wanted to show that class diversity doesn't mean a slow paced game because you watched it. You you saw it on payload. I mean, I was glued put up a, to it. A time of like four minutes on offense. The times were actually considerably, I would say, Super either fast. on par or faster than when you yeah. see in Highlander. And, and they're not slow. And seeing a team push through an entire map in six minutes or seven minutes, that's not slow pace. And the thing is, is that the difference between in white plays better than Highlander is because of the two less classes. And so in Highlander, you can have two to three deaths and you can still try to fight but in this game mode you have two to three deaths um it, it can really open it up and and the other yeah. reason is that if i can so i can kind of go into some of the reasonings of the decision making process of, of why i kind of came to all the conclusions that i did because i never i wasn't very open about that stuff ahead of time because i wanted i just wanted the people just to trust me and i wanted to show you and then like just play it and then i want to talk about it kind of afterwards and and so the reason like for instance of like why i did like one class is one to just force teams to have to try something different but it's other things for instance like um the scout is an insanely powerful class inside of sixes it's probably the most powerful class in the game it's it probably is overall in the right hands minus maybe the sniper but the thing is is that inside of sixes because you have two different scouts the scouts fragile health pool which is which is its balance right it has this high dps yeah. but a really low health pool well if you have two of them and you have them fully buffed that's more damage, more HP than a heavy. That's 370 or give or take. And so if you take one scout though, that's only at max 185. And so that scout's life is this incredibly powerful thing. But if you kill one of them, that's it. It's done. That powerful class is yeah. out of the game. And so it does kind of create now this kind of risk reward situation where two scouts can't jump you. And if you kill the one scout on the team, that's a really big pick in the same way that if you had two snipers or something like that, getting a sniper pick wouldn't mean anything, but having one sniper means everything. And so if you kill the sniper, the other reason is that if you ran a pro lander six V six, more than likely the, the classes you would see are scout soldier demo medic, um, heavy and sniper. It'd be very unlikely that you would see pyro, engineer, or spy. Very unlikely. And so by putting a seventh class in there, those flex roles of the spy, pyro, and engineer actually got utilized. And I think because of the extra people, it ultimately forced teams to like, okay, we have to use a flex role. A lot of teams use a spy. The spy did more work then because there was more people to backstab because there was heavies and stuff like that. And so the spies ended up actually being the consistent class. But I think if you did a pro lander and one person was always on spy, it wouldn't be nearly as effective is yeah. when there's 7v7. And so it's kind of like these different reasons that I think having Sorry, can one I per class... So a pro lander yeah. being a six is high lander. So one yes. of every class, but a, a maximum of six people on the team. Right. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's exactly. And so by having one more, it forces that utility role to have to be used. And then you, the thing that I loved is, is I, I, I love the fact to use the word storyline because that's, I, I use this concept in my head all the time when trying to build this tournament and, and talking about storylines. And that's really what it is because you have so many storylines. You have the game going on. You're playing payload. So you have the objective storyline of time, of how much time's left in the cart, how fast of a time they're pushing, yep. not just control points. And then you have the storyline of pick bands, and then you have the storyline of um, what classes people are changing. Because we'd seemed like, oh, like there was a game where a team was struck, their spy wasn't doing anything, and so then he switched off to pyro, and he was doing a really yeah. good job of air blast. And like, I love that. That's amazing. Like that is a TF2 I'd love to see is people switching off classes to utilize them in different ways. I think that is immensely fascinating but it, it, and really what interesting. What happens in like six v six too is the issue. Is like. But does it like do you? How the, often do you see any cla- no, very let me, let me very see. often it, is the is the thing? It, but no, but, but like, like, it sort of f- comes in like certain parts and plays, which I think is what like you tried to avoid. Like the I I think um the standard way that Agro was complaining about earlier, where it's like you will see certain classes on certain like holds, but you'll never see them say like you'll never see a heavy pushing second in mid. 
like or pushing right. you, mid. You would never see. It's very unusual to see someone running other than the four of the nine classes to the mid fights. Like the classes that come out are, I would say they come out, but in very like it's the the fringe situations of maybe a it, spy pick for last. Or, so or the the phrase European uh, um, European gimmicks. Oh, God. Gimmicks, that's the one. European mm-hmm. gimmicks. So like the idea that like the 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 standard meta is X Y Z, and then if you want to play anything that isn't a soldier, a scout, a demo man, a med, then it's a gimmicky thing. It's yeah. you're trying to force a play. A you're flaw. trying to do something. I think something. it's a flaw of the team if they can't do anything about that. Like I think we've had this uh, conversation before, Agro, where you were asking me why pyros weren't often seen pushing, or like when Mela used to like play the game on his like reign of pyro and you were complaining to me that it's like the team didn't know how to push with him the team didn't know how to really like do anything with him the big thing is is that the reason there isn't a lot of variation i think in sixes when it comes to classes is because of the game mode you're playing five cp which is objectively like you know people want to play it faster pace that's where you become you know you need to be able to push quickly um, and, and that's what the objective is until you come to last where you run a sniper for 10 minutes trying to get a pick. But when you want to attack and defend and stuff like that, you, you want to use those classes. And so having a slow class really does hurt you. But in, when it comes to payload, if you have the fastest classes in the game, it doesn't matter because that cart only moves so fast. And so having that stuff and then also having the, the, having a, a 5v6 fight or versus a 6v7 fight. So like if you have someone on the cart, that's usually going to be like your flex class. And so then you actually can have all of your core players, players forward to try to actually take the next fight. Yep. And so it's like a 6v7, but the seventh person's a flex on their side. You know, so like it's not as drastic of a fight difference, but part of that reason it works is because of the game mode. Like I think 5CP just doesn't lend itself to slow classes. And that's one of the reasons I shied away from because I just didn't think it would yep. play well. I was going to say, one, one, one of the, the worst experiences I had what as a spectator um, was whenever the map turns to five CP, mm-hmm. uh, the whole game slowed down. It, it lost its it lost its flavor uh, somehow, and it kind of returned to that stale place of sixes doing five CP, where you're talking about the the sniper on the last trying to get a pick. It it sort of reverted to that mode, um, and it didn't feel. It felt like all of the joy that you had got for from this environment was was dropped. Well, and, there was <laughs> yeah. sorry. Well, I was going to no, say no. that, so from the first day to the second day, I removed everything except for one 5CP map. Because I just said, like, this is not what I want my tournament to be. This this is not meant to be. Because I think the other thing, too, is that if I put 5CP, it's going to draw comparisons of how the rules that I have plays against sixes. And kind of to what you were saying at the start of this is, like, there's kind of two different ways to play TF2. And there's one which is you want fast pace, you want to play in 5CP, you want to have, you know, a large white list, and you want to play with like four of the nine classes in a very fast way. And then yep. there's an, the other way, which is I want variety in map and game modes. I want variety in classes and I want variety in weapons. And that's what I wanted to present. And I didn't want to compare the two because I don't think either is wrong. I think both are good in their own way, but I don't think they overlap as they currently stand. I think the latter point is something that the 6v6 community implemented a while back with the global white list of seeing like what weapons like would work and what didn't the thing it's it is for 6v6 and like the thing that the global whitelist did was it helped classes like engineer i guess and to an extent i think spy with the recent buff be a lot more viable the problem but- we realized with that is that like engineer for 6v6 with the rescue ranger and the wrangler is like it's insane it draws the game on a lot more in the current 5CP, like, maps that the 6v6, like, format prefers. So in a right. sense, well, at well, that point, but- maybe it's, like, maybe a map rotation would probably be better than, like, simply just, like, the global whitelist at that point. But that, and that's why it's, like, if you have, but if you have, like, and I think that's kind of the inherent nature is, like, when you bring in the other classes of sniper or engineer in particular, that's where, like, having that forced flex role of having a spy ultimately counters it because if you ran as you were talking about before we talked about the challenge cup with the dream hack last season where both teams were sitting on top of snipers if you had a full-time spy that was one of the biggest reasons that the spies actually were consistently top fragging and, and sometimes over fragging the snipers because the razorback was being banned the snipers were being focused and that's one of the reasons the games didn't slow down due to the snipers nearly as much is because you consistently had a spy on top of them if we uh if we say that the whole pick band system is difficult to implement because it's different from what people play when they play pub um would sevens as in the like one of each class seven highlander um would sevens be an effective 
middle ground uh, for the, the the kind of the matchmaking scene, including the pick band uh, system, like and the high level no, restrictions. No, exclu- excluding the pick band system, and just have it as sevens without the pick band, but have that as matchmaking, and then have pick band as part of the the full on competitive. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of these things where it's like I think there's kind of a format yet to be found that really works for it. I think the sevens, as it was shown in the Challenge Cup, was at least kind of like, it proved that like this can work. Um, But I don't think it's necessarily that sixes, that sevens is necessarily the correct number. I just thought it was the correct number right now. I would love to throw another tournament where I did the same thing, but with six V six and just to see what would happen to see if it played better or worse. Um, Cause I really don't know. I, I knew that sevens would work I had a really strong confidence in that, but I could be completely proven wrong and shown that like pro lander on, you know, payload, you know, six V six would work just fine. Um, okay. This, this has been an awesome conversation. I kind of want to move on, but I, I want to say like, You've, you've had a lot of, I mean, you personally have learned a lot from it. I don't know whether the Sixes community has learned anything or the Highland community has learned anything. To, but to you, dismiss you that, we haven't have learned had... anything from it that was like, not collected, so I, like. Okay. So I, I don't know that they have or have not learned anything from this as a result of, of the, the competition, but I, I, I can't speak of them or for them all since this is only the three of us here in this room right now. It's not a room, but you know what I mean? Um, what I can do is I can ask Sigafu since you are here. Um, have have you taken anything away from this? Would you want to do this again? Uh, I mean, it, it was your own money. It 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 was a large chunk of uh, money for that matter, um, and it was a lot of organisation. And I would imagine a certain amount of joy, but not all of it was joy. I can I can think that there's a lot of heartache in there as well. Would you want to do it again? And would you like to see other people mess with the format again? Um, would I like to do it again? I, I mean, I think if, yeah, I mean, putting down that much money again, um, I mean, putting down that much money in the first place, I don't think necessarily got what I wanted out of the tournament. I wanted, you know, a really strong lineup of teams. And I figured, hey, look at nobody's putting money into TF2. Let me go put money into TF2. And people are like, that's not what we want. Um, and so <laughs> it's like, all right, guys, sorry, I guess I tried to give you money and you didn't want my money. So, um, but no, it, 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 I, I would, so to do it over again for the first time, absolutely hands down. I, I have to be like Frank that like the way that, um, the whole thing came about and the, um, the, the harsh and relentlessness of the sixes community in particular, um, and, and their feelings towards the tournament, especially when I kind of pivoted away from them and kind of like, I just don't think you guys want this. So that's cool. I'm going to do my own thing. You guys do your own thing. Cause I don't think there's anything wrong with sixes. Like it's very good for what they want to be, but kind of what you said at the start is like, you, you said at the very start of this, when you started out is that the sixes community is good for what it does, but that's not my TF2. My TF2 is, you know, all these different things. And so I was like, what do I kind of want my TF2 to look like? I want it to be on payload. I want it to be more inclusive of different classes. And I thought it came off well for that. And so would I do it again? Um, I would love to do something close to it. I'd love to see other people try out the format and different stuff. The, the pick ban system as it currently stood, um, I thought was, it was unoptimized. It was not a, it was not as quick as it needed to be. Um, uh, there was things that I think could be done particularly like to, to do a whitelist, you have to upload th- something to the server, which is a hassle, um, versus if you could just set it like it to a URL is a little thing. Um, being able to, I mean, there's so much stuff that I, I learned from this experience yeah. that I think could make it better. And I would love to see people experiment with the format. Um, and, and we'll kind of see what comes from it, but I, I definitely feel like I learned a lot from it because the biggest question to me was, what happens, right? Like that was to me is like, cause I, I play tested. This is true. I did no pick ban. I had seven V seven of like gold to platinum players in a server. We played three maps and it didn't play terribly. I'm like, God, I hope it plays like <laughs> <laughs> as good as this. Or that yeah. is all, all I knew. Nobody play tested it prior to. I don't know if any of the teams to really have practiced it. And, and, and then you go watch the games and, and I think you're playing one right now on, on the thing. And you can go, um, youtube.com slash, um, com ft, c-o-m-m ft. That's X television. You can go watch the matches and make the decision for yourself if you like them or not. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I thought it turned out well. I would love to do it again to some degree or something, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm t- kind of taking a break because it was just so stressful. I- I've never really been at the focal point of of um, dislike for community. Um, and so that was just like a really challenging experience to go through. And uh, but I think coming out the other side uh, has been really good. And I'm really proud of, of kind of what came of that weekend. That's 
very pleasing for me to hear. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Um, this is always a period, uh, this time of year, when uh, filmmakers, SFM creators, audio artists, and uh, voiceover people, and, well, you know, people who love kind of making stuff go nuts. It is, of course, the Saxies. Uh, the Saxies this year was hard fought. Uh, we, we mentioned last week that some of the best Saxies that I have ever 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 seen or we've ever seen come out of the community came out in full effect in 2016 and quite a lot of them uh had nothing whatsoever to do with team fortress 2 uh they're all utilizing sfm all utilizing characters and and models and, and backgrounds and art and and beauty and a variety of things that we had not expected to see including a bunny rabbit at one point which i was significantly disappointed to discover that it wasn't even included in the nominations this year um, it wasn't included all of in the nominations, yeah. It was included in the nominations. Anyway, so the, the, the nominations, uh, were announced earlier on this week, um, as is usually the way, four for each category. A little bit of, uh, trepidation. Um, some of the, uh, some of the nominations were perhaps not what I was expecting. And, uh, a winner from each one of those uh, nominations chosen and in fact a winner overall as well um it it's been a mad week and i know uber chain you you were personally involved in an sfm which didn't quite make it all the way you to the finishing line did not make it to the sexy deadline but enough about that we sort of at this point it's like it's focusing on this year's saxies which had some pretty strong contenders a lot of repeat people people from last year are coming back and basically getting double saxies yep. there's double like saxy winners who are going back to valve for the second time oh god okay so we're gonna skip straight to the chase on this one um the the, the winner was kind of as a lot of us suspected it would be uh the uh the team that presented timeless thief um it was uh it was beautiful it's it's the one that you could loop back and back uh back to back for for 10 hours straight and i don't know whether winglet has, has managed to create a 10 hour version of this yet but uh i would yeah. much like to winglet see that and a few of it, the people on the team basically sat down it's like we're getting best overall and they basically did that like they absolutely went in and they got best overall they had some custom assets that other like shorts would never ever see like for tf2 like that was a huge thing this year i noticed a lot of people wanted to roll in like custom stuff because people are how long has yeah. the saxes been going like six years now like five years maybe yeah in terms 2012 of i think was the first one so everybody's seen yeah. sort of the same thing over and over that could be why valve is also leaning towards like promoting non-tf2 work but i think if they're i, I do don't know I think okay if they're right. doing so that though that like there were a lot of entries a lot of really really spectacularly wonderful entries in this i mean the conversation i think we moved on from from like the it being like timeless teeth that won and congratulations to to winglet to andy thibo ttmr sedimentary socks xb33 uh woolers woolzels i don't know Wizzles, thank you um to uh is that bloodix Blade X64? Blade X64, I believe. Makes sense. I don't know why I'm struggling with that name. It seems so obvious now. Uh, Poo Modi. I'm just waiting for you to correct me on each. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know that one. Okay. Poo Modi. Uh, yeah. And Music guy. Taco Man. Taco Man, yeah. Okay. Taco, Taco Man. He's a particle effects da, 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 guy. Uh, yeah, so all of those guys get to go and, and, uh, meet up with Valve in their studios and talk SFM and, and swing magical swords around and experience virtual reality for the 14th time. Um, and, and walk away with a bag of goodies and get lost in a state park somewhere. Perhaps they'll go skiing this year. We don't, we don't, we don't know. Um, and like maybe they'll get jobs because like <laughs> how many times do you have to win a, a, a competition before Valve offers you a job? There's some concern that like they're going to do it again, actually. And like that's always the sort of thing with competitions that don't hold back bars. There's always the people who get like screwed over or who just who just weren't enough to compete, but felt like they were enough to compete complaining that because there's so many repeat like power teams, like there's no point in well, competing I mean, so anymore because is... they'll win. 
which is something so that, So this like, is something that happens within Compestive. It's certainly something that happened in, like, South African and, uh, to a certain degree, uh, other locations. Like, there, there'd be one team that would win every single time there was a competition. And so you you always know the best uh, you can ever get is second place. And, and that's really not a great uh, position to be in. Like, first place wins a trip to Valve and awesomeness and celebrations. Second place... There is no second place. There's lots of second places. There's joint second for a lot of people. Uh, and they get to have an in-game item and, and, and be wonderful and, and whack people over the head and, and all that kind of wonderful stuff. But the, like, first place is the big. Uh, so maybe that is going to be an issue for, for years think, to come, but I, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. I, I honestly believe that that's, that's kind of ridiculous. I, no, I actually disagree. I think that the sack season needs to change by next year. Otherwise it's, I, I, I won't use the word dead. But I think there's a huge fundamental issue, and I think I've talked about it in fast in like past years with the Saxi Awards, in that it if Valve is and there's been a lean towards like a lot of community members not wanting to do TF2 entries or like a lot more emphasis on picking non TF2 entries for. I basically. I honestly believe this year the non TF2 there were a lot of non TF2 entries which were awesome they, they were fantastic like, way way and beyond I, if if i were given the stage that i have i kind of want to go into the drama for a moment the hunted was awesome hunted was so wrong it turned my brain in a way that my brain doesn't want to go uh and and that that uh well it was team fortress 2 sure but it wasn't like team fortress 2 was almost like an aside to yeah, actually TF2. what was going it, on it, it used the tf2 universe and maybe some characters but it wasn't like in it, it like, wasn't really like, tf2 we've seen like examples TF2 of this. were props for for what was really going on with the actual like oh it, oh so that one for me was was drama it was horrid it was gruesome it was oh but it wasn't celebrating Team Fortress 2. It was... Oh, actually, watching it again now, I feel kind of weird. Um, and I, I personally found that one much more dramatic and much more interesting than Living in Obscurity, which I, is the final I, winner for drama. I have very mixed feelings about Living in Obscurity winning because it was... It was initially submitted like under the comedy moniker, but it was submitted in comedy mm. and drama. The thing about it, this is the drama was placed in like a three-paragraph description and I was like, if it, if you have to explain it in the description rather than through the short, you've done something wrong. Like that's, yeah. and, and that's really like harsh for me to say because I'm usually one of those people who will say, yes, check the description. But in this case, like in a cinematics like competition where a lot of things are taken into factor, if it doesn't shine through in like the actual video and you have to explain it in text, you've done something wrong. Like, I am a big proponent of putting your canon where it matters the most in the actual, like, in the actual stuff. It's basically the same issue people had with the extended universe of Star Wars, which was recently dismissed as completely not canon a while back. But other, otherwise, it's like, I think the issue with the Saxies is that it needs to expand. Like, if they want it to be a source filmmaker contest, period, rather than, like, known as the, that TF2 contest, because we talked about, like, what happened last year with the Dota entry, right? Yes, yeah, so the Dota entry was was knocked back for, for not being Team Fortress 2. That's Yeah, that's it was also, like, apparently sure. it was also substantially, like, not a great film, so that was why there was a lot yeah. of backlash, but still, it's sort of like, at this point, I think, and I and I made a rant about this somewhere, the Saxes needs to either, like, sort of stay as TF2 and have a separate, like, source filmmaker contest, or it needs to expand outwards towards other Valve IPs. Like, why am I not able yeah. to stab somebody in CSGO with a sexy, like, knife? Why wouldn't I have, like, a sexy <laughs> effigy for Dota 2? That sort of thing. That, or, like, yeah. like, source filmmaker has a ton of potential to be, like, and they could invest more into it to promote it as, like, a machine of software if they'd bother well, the, to the very it. fact that like source there's two versions of source now one for dota and one for everything else that that's the sort of the source filmmaker it, it's 
it's a kind of bizarre madness that uh that, that hasn't been updated yeah, it's a, it's a uh, tool basically it's a tool that people use for things for things other than valve games blizzard has commissioned me to make them source filmmaker posters for overwatch using valve software there is a lot of potential for the software to go somewhere and it's like why isn't it why is it stagnating probably because they're using vr probably because it's like but this year i think they need to take a look at the saxies in terms of like prize distribution especially when the dota 2 contest and it's probably because it's dota 2 the dota 2 video like source filmmaker 2 contest that they have uh first place gets shown at ti right during like one of the ceremonies i think opening ceremonies and they also get a twenty five thousand dollar first place prize what 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 yes there's a forty thousand dollar prize pot for the dota 2 sfm short film contest but 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 so, so but, really but, what is what? the point of me like making an original universe entry for the saxies if i don't care about tf2 anymore and that's not to say i do it's just like a hypothetical situation like what's the incentive for me for a tf2 item versus part of a forty thousand dollar prize pot it's like there needs to be more incentive for the saxies in order to promote it as valve wants to promote it like a source filmmaker oh, contest. Well. Well, this has been a very downcast uh, look at Source Filmmaker. Source Filmmaker uh, has a lot of issues. That is, that is not what I was expecting to get out of this particular segment. But anyway, oh, it, boy. It, it's like, congratulations I, I to like, the winners. I feel like I've just presented Top Gear after many years of trying to get on, only to discover that all the main presenters aren't here anymore, and it's just oh, me and Chris Evans. Oh, what's that about that Jeremy fellow? He's kind of a dick. Mmm, yes. Mmm. Have you so, been going around punching people? Is that what you're trying to tell me, Uber? Mm, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Nobody gets fired from the BBC for punching people. Uh, so look, that there was there was some amazing content in there. I was a little bit disappointed by some of the results on there. I don't think anyone was particularly surprised by by the final winner. Although it would have been a little bit mad to have somebody who didn't put a Team Fortress Two entry in come first. I think uh, it would have been but fantastic. I think, I, but like, I think, I, I think it would have been fantastic. Yeah, Oh, it have stirred up the community something rotten. And there were some really, really cool entries in it as well. I think having, uh, in the extended entry, having, uh, the, the winner there, the, the reinstated the arrival. I mean, that was, was really good. Oh, that was really nice. One of the things that I, I mean, uh, always talked about this in the past is walk cycles. Uh, the ability to make your characters look like they're walking naturally in many of the SFMs, including the overall winner there's something very wrong with how those characters are walking that's like please go back to school and learn how to walk oh you um, could you could like go to school you can pay money yeah. for like um animation school and you still wouldn't learn how to do a walk cycle god walk cycles well, are that's so the thing. hard <laughs> so hard indeed it's why it's on everybody's reel but like within uh reinstated they were walking so naturally so awesome like it's a funny thing to notice but you really notice it when it's not there uh yep yeah, so there was some clear talents uh in in effect during the sfms uh a few things that were portrayed or uh, pretended to be funny that actually weren't that were in the comedy section um and yeah so uh okay so next year uh 2017 when we see the sfms again there's going to be a clear judging uh, list of how things are judged is there actually uh, is there no. actually? Uh, there's, there's, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be, uh, a few moments where, where Valve get on camera and tell us why they've chosen the things that they've chosen. Uh, there's going to be a new version of SFM. Uh, there's going to be a prize pool of many thousands of dollars. Um, and there's going to be an opportunity to have your entire body encased in Australium and put on display in Valve Studios for at least 26 hours, uh, until you've entirely suffocated. So those are things that are up for grabs next year in my mind. Uh, and only in my mind. But for now, it has been another exciting uh, and active uh, edition of the Saxies from 2016. In fact, it's been another exciting and amazing edition of Critscast, which is now on YouTube. Yes, we you finally know? made it for Thank YouTube. For Huzzah, indeed. Uh, there was the first uh, episode we put out. Um, we've actually been asking for people to submit their own artwork. 
There's a link I'd like everybody to go to. Uh, it's called chriscross.com forward slash your art. And we've had a lot of submissions of extraordinary value. Um, the, the one that we picked this time round belonged to a gentleman by the name of Maro. Uh, and uh, we have issued Maro a, a vintage lo-fi long wave for his efforts. Uh, it was a beautiful, dark and mysterious piece. Uh, featuring a little bit of SFM in a static format, but that art, that colour, that that use of light and shade and darkness was chilling and wonderful. Uh, the thumbnail came to us via Wave Robin, who is just doing awesome things for us at the moment. Thank you very much. Uh, if you would like to be utilised for your artistic talent, and we do mean artistic talent, I mean, not just SFM, but anyone can submit anything with a Team Fortress 2 lilt to it, uh, to the com forward slash your art page, and we will consider it for use on YouTube. And invite you to do that. We'll, we'll provide a link within the page to the thing that you would like for people to go to and see the art that you make and the things and the darkness that lies beneath. Before we leave, I don't know why I've got into that voice. It's weird. Before we leave. <laughs> I, was, I was curious. You know, <laughs> We're going to a strange going? place now. Uh, before we leave, we'd like to uh, bring Sigafu back from the dead one more time uh, and ask him um, to, to name us a player of the week. Uh, oh. I should have prepped you for this one, but if you've been listening to the show in no, the past, can... you'll know that this was coming. Uh, I, yeah, actually, I did know it was coming. Uh, I guess it, but I didn't realize I was going to be the one who had to decide it. Um, I would give it to my boy Yachts and Miggy, who did uh, a lot of work in doing their best to corral the uh, players who did everything they could to slow down <laughs> doing the pick bands and stuff like that and, and get in everything coordinated to the Challenge Cup. They really helped me out a lot um, because I was busy trying to do the production side of things. And so for them to help me out with the Challenge Cup was a, a really big deal because it wouldn't have gone off nearly as smoothly as it did if I didn't have a couple people to my side. Well, uh, Yachts is in our chat at the moment. He's actually been player of the week in the past and he, he will almost certainly right now or very shortly, uh, have his vintage lo-fi. He's demanding we give it to Miggy. Yeah, Miggy's so, done a lot for the community as well. So he deserves it. Miggy too. as in so, like Flan Miggy? Yeah. Oh yeah, give it to Miggy. <laughs> okay. Well, Miggy, uh, congratulations. You are this week's player of the week. Wow. Got our awesome. fully expert right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's burned into Indeed. my ears. Yeah, it's burned into my mind. I wake up in the morning and my first thought is... Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that is a strange person Sounds to wake up Sounds worse than tinnitus, to. you know? That uh, just... Doctor, I just keep hearing this trumpet in my ear. I keep oh, hearing yeah. this cast player of the wig jingle. How do I get rid of it? <laughs> oh, uh, you stop doing awesome things for the community. That's, that's how you get rid of it. Uh... Speaking of awesome things to the community and those that have been done, Sigafu, thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, how do people find out about you and the things you do, the excitement and joy you bring to the world? Um, just go to TFTV. Uh, whatever I'm doing, it'll be on there. No, um, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> Twitter uh, is a good way to keep in touch with me. Uh, Twitter.com slash Sigafu. There's also, I have a Steam group that I get live uh, notifications on. And then you can follow me on Twitch at Twitch TV slash Sigafu. That's S-I-G-A-F-O-O. Seven letters. Go figure. Sigafu, Sigafu. We really like your Sigafu. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's your own little jingle. You can use it wherever you like. I just, I'm going to put that on my ringtone and people, <laughs> I'll be like, who's that man? And it's the man who inflated my ego even larger. So, so I put it as my ringtone to remind me to never let it go down. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the show and we that's do great. wish you the best in the future. Thank you. Uh, Uber chain. Uh, I, I need to ask this of all my victims. Uh, Uber chain. Um, how do people follow you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr. DeviantArt and my YouTube at the same username, Uberchain. If you Google it, you'll probably find it. Awesome. And if people is even vaguely is even a person, if a person were to be very eager to discover me 
I'm on the on the Twitters uh, on my real name, which is John Irwin, J O H N I R W I N. How weird is it that I like that? But he's got these cool names. Hey, follow me on at Sigafu. I, I, yes. I think it's professional, though. Like a lot of people <laughs> have done that. They've used their IRL names, but they use their usernames in their like in their screen names. If that makes sense. Sigafu Barry. I don't know what your real name is, Sigafu. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's Derek. Uh, it's Derek. Sigafu Derek. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. So that's a thing. Anyway, um, I am very sad to, to say goodnight again, but I'm going to do it now and wish you the best of luck in finding yourself some Team Fortress 2 related joy over this week. Good night, everyone, and please, whatever you're doing this evening, I don't. Don't? Hello? Take too long to come up with an idea. <laughs> Apparently, don't try to do an outro. That's that's don't what do an outro. Don't, Whatever you do, don't, don't do, do an, an outro. outro. Whatever you do, just just leave just, early. Just just go. It's too late now. So long and thanks for all the fish. Should have banned the outro weapon. Anyway, say good night, Sigafu. Good night. Say good night to the nice people in the chat. Don't tell me what to do. Clean your room and good night, Kevin.